I'm here in southwest Montana, just a little south of the small town of Dillon, Montana. And out in here, I find that beautiful, characteristic Montana scenery, the green hills, snow-capped mountains, big sky country, and a remote landscape. In fact, if you go off driving or hiking in this area, you can go and never see another person. But believe it or not, in this area, it was packed with people in the 1800s. In fact, just to the northwest of me over those hills, there are two of the earliest mining camps in Montana, the towns of Bannock and Argenta. prospectors found gold in Grasshopper Creek. Now over the years they actually hand dug ditches to bring water in and this little area grew into a mining boom town known as Bannock. This became Montana's most important city. In fact it became Montana's very first capital city. But as with most booms in these years what quickly followed was the bust and the area around Bannock was depleted of its once rich placers and the mines were nearly idle already by 1890. Then came the dredges. In 1895, the very first U.S. gold dredge worked these stream gravels, and several more followed. But this too happened pretty quickly. In just a few short years, the mining towns were already once again going quiet, but they left behind huge piles of gravel tailings and pools, and some of those were even handworked at first, but then once the dredges came in, everywhere in the area now around streams, you can find these piles of gravels that were worked until they got all the gold they could find. Now just down the road from Bannock in 1862, another boom town was stirring. But this had a slightly different beginning. There was gold found in a nearby creek, Rattlesnake Creek, but it was only a small amount and it didn't seem that promising. Then, just a short time after, prospectors found vein deposits of silver and lead. This town became Argenta. And if you remember, looking at a periodic table, the symbol for silver is AG. The root of this word actually is responsible for the name of this town, Argenta, and the name of a country, Argentina. In 1866, Argenta became the site of Montana's first smelter, which required a lot of trees for charcoal to burn in charcoal kilns. You can actually still see some leftover charcoal kilns in the area today. Just down the road is another major 1800s mining district from this area, and that's the Hecla Mining District. Here you can see the remnants of those charcoal kilns that led to the burning of tens of thousands of acres of trees necessary to make charcoal to run the nearby smelter to process all of the But ore. Argenta went essentially quiet by 1890, aside from a few spurts when the price of silver rose. Hey, just a real quick message from me, Heather, the host here at Let's Go Geo. Actually, I am host, videographer, photographer, editor, creator, all that stuff. This channel is run solely by me, and I started it because I do love geology and all things related to the topic, and I love teaching, and I thought it would be a great way to bring to people that in the field experience, but digitally. So... Let's Go Geo was born. The project's going well, but I have a lot of great other ideas. So if you want to help me out, support me, and help the project move along, you can find me on Patreon, and you can become a fan there as well as get access to exclusive content. So head over to Patreon. Otherwise, let's get back to today's topic. This is an intrusive igneous rock. It forms from the cooling and hardening of magma at depth. And this is a limestone. It comes from oceanic minerals and organisms collecting in seas and turning in to this rock. Now, the interplay between these two types of rocks is what gave us the precious resources that these prospectors were after in the towns of Bannock, Argenta, and nearby Montana mines in the 1800s. In this case, the material that was an intrusion was a granitic magma that intruded a limestone. The Madison limestone, a large group of limestone and related sedimentary rocks that we can find across Montana. Now, the gold and related metals that they were after can be mined and extracted in several different ways. When they started off, they were primarily placer mining, which essentially means they were combing through the stream gravels to get out gold that they could find. But then in 1863, they constructed a stamp mill that basically served to pound this rock into powder to get the gold out that way. 
1874, more stamp mills were constructed, and they were working so much rock that the process happened pretty quickly. In 1914, they constructed a cyanide mill that basically dissolves gold from rock, but this only operated for a short time. In fact, in 1920, they built the last stamp mill. It only operated for about two years before it was essentially done. And so goes the stories of booms and busts and two of the very first mining towns of the Wild West here in Montana. Now, of course, today, it's pretty much a scene of solitude and maybe a bear or a moose to see, but in the 1800s, there would have been people all over looking for silver and gold. Of course, they did leave their mark on the land. We can see remnants, the smelters, the nuded hills from all the trees that they cut down to run the charcoal kilns and build the structures, those of which we can also see charcoal kilns and leftover mining structures are still in the area, as well as those endless tailing piles from the gravel when they were dredging those streams. I hope you guys enjoyed this walk back in mining history here on Let's Go Geo. I'll be talking about a lot more interesting mining areas around the U.S. and beyond coming soon and lots of cool topics in geology as I trudge around in the field and bring to you guys a virtual field trip in geology. So if you're not already subscribed, please join me on these adventures here. Just hit the subscribe button here on Let's Go Geo and I'd love to see you guys there. See you next time. Thank you.